I'm not going to say which way I'm going on this, is up to Boris. I don't even know if Boris or anybody else has actually said they want to stand him. Maybe sanity has come to them and they don't want to stand, which would be the logical place for them to be, I think. So who would you encourage to stand then? I would encourage nobody to stand at this present point, having been leader. Well, well that would myself. be terrible, wouldn't it? The com country would be without a prime minister. No, of course, you know, as they all say, um, they've allowed, someone will allow their name to be uh, taken forward. It's always the well, euphemism I think that's used, isn't as it? A, as an observer of these things, uh, who would you expect the contenders would be? I honestly don't know. I mean, you've seen a few runners and riders already yourself, uh, but I don't know. There's often the person you don't know. You've seen well, that's it what I'm with you, isn't it? But yeah. uh, what about your friend uh, George Osborne? Minister, Would you advise Prime George Osborne to stand? I'm not giving any advice to anybody, to any of my colleagues. I leave the field open to them. All I say is, once they place their credentials on the table, in due course, uh, the Conservative Party will think about who they want to lead them. But I think the most important point to make is, this is a momentous decision to leave the European Union today. It's very important that the Prime Minister, who's chosen to go but he stays at the moment, now gets into discussions with his colleagues uh, to look at the way ahead and to make sure that uh, therefore we have a plan and that plan is agreed and we can get on with it rather than waiting for too long. It looks like Scotland might go now. Uh, Alex Salmond talking about a second referendum. Even Peter Mandelson talking, saying you wouldn't blame the Scots if they had a second referendum. How do you hold on to Scotland? I gave up listening to Peter Mandelson a long, long time ago. And as for Alex Salmond, you know, on a wet Wednesday, he'll find an excuse for a referendum. The Scott Nats exist to break up the union, all right? And our job well, is to ensure they don't. That's the only way. They, how do the Scots stay in the European Union without independence? Well, the United Kingdom was their choice. A once-in-a-generation vote, I it think, was, was what was they the, said. A United Kingdom in the EU was their choice. Yeah, but a United Kingdom is their choice. They do the vast majority of their trade. All I say to Scots people is, like everybody else, pause and reflect. You know, the United Kingdom has a real possibility here to do incredibly well, and in that, the Scotland will do incredibly well as well. And they need to look at what they think is really good in the European Union. They'll find, you know, mass unemployment, dead marketplaces, other countries like Sweden, Holland, Denmark now talking about having referendums to leave, you know, even France talking about it. My view is really a period of calm and reflection will do us all very well. And the reality is the markets now need to sort themselves out because the essentials of the British economy have not changed. High, un high employment, you know, growth at highest levels in the G8, and monetary policy, which has already been the envy of much of the Western world as we reduce our deficit. These are all still there, and I'm in favour of the markets now taking a proper, serious view about this. And Scotland, too, I hope, will take a look at this and say, actually, we don't want to rush anything. Let's think about it. Would it be disruptive to, for the new Conservative leader to have a, a general election in the autumn, get a new mandate, have a few more Brexit MPs? You're rather short of them at the moment. Uh, no, I, I don't think general elections at this point are a good idea. I think you know what he's now said is he will step down. There'll be a new no, no, leader. No, no, but the new leader might choose to have a. No, a I, I'm, I'm in favour of, uh, of governing. We had a mandate to govern, and we must get on with it now. But don't you need? A, I mean, you've got three to one outnumbered in the House of Commons. Uh, Three quarters of the House of Commons are Remainers, only a quarter are Brexiters. Okay. Maybe a new election would give you a, 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 a more people, more. Well, more I actually Commons. think we just had a referendum, and that referendum was the British people saying we have made a decision on a turnout, by the way, by the way which is higher than the general election. And they said we've made a decision, and we expect you, the Commons, to implement that decision in whatever way is necessary, and we have to get on with that. I mean, some people say they'll defy them, but my view about this is when the British people make a decision, it's best not to defy them, it's best to go along with it and see how you get the best out of that. So Boris Johnson in number 10 by the end of September? I have no idea. Uh, you will have to watch this. You will no doubt be filled over the next few weeks and months with talking to people who keep telling you they're not going to be standing for leader, and uh, they may even confound you at that point. All I say to you is uh, you won't be having that conversation with me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, William from ITN. What are your